Right, hi folks, this is Sheila, it's 2010 and I'm just continuing with the re-recording of the original cassette tapes that I used to use while doing um, field research for Family Tree, looking for the ancestors up in Suffolk and Cambridge from 2005 to 2008. I still use these tools as they're very useful as backup as well as the mobile video recorder, which I've yet to use in that area. Anyway, th we're going back in time now, and we're off to a place called Soham. It's June the 4th, two th 2006. Apologies for any problems with the tape recorder. Here we go. Well, it's June the 4th. Events in the world. There was a terrorist attack on London Friday where the police raided a, a suspected home in East London. Um, England beat Jamaica in the friendly prior to the World Cup, 6-0. Three goals to Crouch, Michael Owen got one, and I think Gerard or Lampard got the other one. And someone else got one as well. Um, Georgia's heavily pregnant, not long to go now. Um, and Zara, Brandy and me are going out on this lovely sunny day. And we're going to go and find a few churches and graves to do. And I shall be reporting to you when we get there. Twenty-two, age ninety-four. So there you are. Um, 
related to Cromwell, aren't they? This is Oliver Cromwell Addison. Then you got Robert Dare, Esquire, died April 1770. Also Mary, wife of Robert Dare, Esquire, daughter of William Russell Esquire of Fordham Abbey and Eliza, his wife, who was the only surviving daughter of Henry Cromwell, Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, son of Oliver Cromwell, Protector, died November the 5th, 1765, aged 75. So we've got a Russell over that side, that's Thomas Russell Addison. Well, on this side we've got Thomas Addison and daughter of somebody, Mary <coughs> Dare, died 8th of January 1779, aged 50, and Thomas and Eliza Addison, who died June 15th, 1792, aged 25, and also Anne, the wife of Russell Addison, who died March the 15th, 1846, in the 86th year of her of age. Then on this side we've got William Addison who died November the 12th, 1868, aged 78. Also Anne's wife who died July the 25th, 1883, aged 84. No, not really, no. No, this is our first day here. I've taken some pictures of um, Selm. I don't even know the name of the church. Let me have a look on the door for reference. St Andrew's Parish Church of Selm. I'm going to sit the doors open with Zara. I think we're local compared to someone from Australia. Oh yeah, I'm just going inside. Alright then. Right. Salve Church St Andrews, this is where some of our family come from. Where well, they don't you know. Um Leaflet off the pay for. Just having a quick look round the inside of the church. Um, they've got a solemn roll of honour and an honoured memory of the men of Sam who lost their lives for liberty and justice. The Great War of 1914 to 1919. You've got an E sizer, private, a G sizer, corporal, and another Robert sizer, also a private. There's also a W H Lockwood, by the way, there, private. Um, no hassles. Plaque on the wall, sacred to the memory of John Peachy, Squire of the Holmes. So we died March 29th, 1818, in his 66th year of his age. Also Richard, son of the above, John Peachy, and Mary, his wife, who died February the 6th, 1795, aged 15. <coughs> it's quite a big church, actually. Um... Few plaques on the walls. Disaster. Whenever you go out, make sure that your tape is working. You haven't put it on pause. I was talking for half an hour, and none of it was on tape. Mind you, I'm glad it wasn't, because I was a bit moody at the start of the session, and so I was strange as well. Um, but we've had a look around a lot of um, graves. Most of them are, are not readable. They're made of that funny sandstone. Um, there's a, a hills. Do you know which hills it is? There's some hills here, so I reckon we're related to them as well. But I did give out the odd name around here, and um, yeah, there was a Thomas Peak. That, yeah, there's a peak. There's um somebody and man. Yeah, I just go back to this um size of Fison. Um, 
August the 2nd, 18, either 28 or 38, aged 34 or 54. Also, um, Joshua, son of the above, who died December something, 18, could be 11, age 11. And three other children who died in their infancy. That's what that says on that stone. So we need to look that up when we get back. But there's a nice, nice little family group there. They're all together. See, that looks like a big... This looks like an old stone. There's a great big O in the middle of that. It's very big and solid, that one, isn't it? It was on there again. Yeah, that's a big solid one. I bet that was parents of somebody or other in there. I can see the name just about size on this huge one. Very ornate sandstone graves, but very, you know, with the, with the colour plucker, you, they get some... Um, see, when you're covered in ivy like that, they will not get the colour plucker. They won't get the lichens on them that protects them. So this one, if we, if we were to clear all that ivy off, we'd be able to read the name. Yeah, we, we just meet, I think he was New Zealand or Australian when we were walking around. He was looking for the Muffet, or Muffet. Murphet. Oh, Murphet family. Julie said we weren't local, even though we travel all around the world. Yeah. Well, we aren't really local. It's the first time we've ever been here. We are, no, but we only live like six miles away. Yeah, but, we, yeah, but when you're local, it's due to have local knowledge. Well, we don't. William Bullman, May the 6th, 1797, aged, aged, don't know, that says, looks like 11, funny 11 though, and Sarah, wife, 1837, aged 76, so he, he couldn't have been 11 years old. Definitely not, and there's some staples in here as well. I think it's staples. I'm just having to backtrack because my tape didn't work. The very, some graves have been cast aside and de demolished almost by people. Yeah, the Sarah, wife of George Dennis, died in 18 either 53 or 33, age 54, just doing the odd name, we're just going to have a look at the top here because we didn't quite see what was around the corner, and here we've got the church still, with the mason's mark, which means something, I Far from wondering, it's a horizontal line with an arrow underneath. It's a mason's mark, I think. Or it could be a, like a compass point as well. They all have different doors for different ceremonies or something. Yeah. Did we look at this one? Who's this here? In memory of Hugh Palmer, who died October the 19th, 1826, age 60. You see, the, the lichens are different over the side of the graveyard. Because mm -hmm. there's, a, 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 what's that tall one there? That one seems okay. We can go, oh, we can't go through, we can get out of this park. And his wife Susan, who died 1826, age 67. Still hard to breathe. That one's been scrubbed and ruined. Look, wow. see someone's tried to clean this one. You lost what you were doing. James and Mary, somebody or other. There's big scratch marks over one of the graves. Well, that is old. That one looks very old. Oh, that's why just people what they do they get their fairy liquid in there. They've done it on this one. Look, this has been cleaned. Is that another Palmer? No, paler. Oh. Yeah, people have been trying to clean them in, in, yeah, in all goodwill, in all goodwill. I know, and they end up with a scratch mark. And then there's a huge one through here, Elizabeth, daughter of 
William and Eliza Dewsbury. Yeah, that's right. The Dewsbury's. It's a big slab. Yeah, no, I just wanted to look. Something tells me that Bren's Corner. So I did go all around the graveyard doing plotting names. But um, this is a, a lesson to be learnt. I mean, good job I spotted it while I was still in this graveyard. Imagine getting back and thinking, where's the tape? It's a long walkway, but we haven't got time to explore. We're not really bothered by actually exploring the local area, really. We're just trying to locate um, locate the ancestors. All scattered about here. Of course, I, I am interested in the local area. That comes later <coughs> when I want to go for the walks between the villages and <coughs> and um, scan everything and explore, you know. <coughs> so that is an important feature. Right, on the notice board, visitor information, it says St Andrew's Church was a Saxon cemetery since 1102. People have been living in and near the town since the Stone Age. Oh, and it tells you a bit about um, that, um, a picture I've got of a, a like a crane thing attached to a building by the Fountain Pub. It was erected in the 17th century, the fountain was. And the Still Yard Weybridge that forms part of the Fountain Pub, it's believed to be one of only two working examples in the country. I said it was rare, but I saw it. Remember, I said, I've not seen that before. So I took a picture of it. Uh, the commons and horse pens. Sermon has a number of commons that are unique to the town. They are derived from strip farming methods and land rights that go back to the medieval period when the sizers were farmers and yeomen. They have carnivals, pumpkins and fun. We have an annual pumpkin fair is held every September. Something we could come to. This includes a carnival and a heavy horse show. Oh, I wonder what that is. Before the fens were drained, the tiny settlement of Serum stood by a mere or inland waterway. There's a number of walks it tells you about. Yeah. Right, we're back at the camper van now after a little bit of um, a disturbed start. What with me finding halfway round the churchyard that the tape hadn't been turned on. Anyway, we're back now, and we're going to the next Serum church up the road. And um, there's free car parking here in the park. We've got when we got here, and there's also toilet facilities. Always useful to know these things. Brandy sat in the front seat with Sarah. Um, we've had our nibblies, always another good thing to have when you're out travelling because um, doing the field work one gets a bit peckish. Um, so that's that, we had, you know, a little look round, the church was very interesting inside. Quite big, much bigger than I thought. So anyway, we're off to the next church now, so we're off from St Andrews to the next one. I just want to point out something about um, Soham. <coughs> Not long, I think it might have been a couple of years prior to us going there, that two little girls from Soham had been murdered. Um, one was called Chapman, and they're buried in the local cemetery, where lots of Isaacsons are buried as well, and, and um, Sizers. Um, and I'd never heard of Soham until that murder, and I at that time I never would have believed we ever had ancestors there or that we would one day be going there it's all very weird isn't it really and um, all that sort of thing just a little bit of history about the place um, of course when I visited the cemetery I, I didn't actually I did go up to their grave but I didn't take any photos you know out of respect really um, but I might I might take some another time you know when I go back again so I need to go back to that church of St Andrews Right, carrying on with the cassette, back to 2006. Probably a warden in that house. Which way are you going to go? Should we go up the top, out the way? Should we go up? Right, 
Rutherford Serum Cemetery. It's a very large cemetery, huge, actually. Look at on the way along. Sorry, if you go. Hannah, wife of William Hazelwood, died November 1862. Sarah said there's Hazelwoods in the family as well. This is such a big graveyard, we're only going to be able to stand today because we've got Brandy with us. We're going to have to do this as a separate trip, so we're just having a very quick look round for now. Yeah, there's some Collins. James Collin died March 27th, 1912, and James Collin died January the 11th, 1915, age 85. The other one was 80. There's a few Collins. It could be a derivative of, of Colin. It's uh, Philippa. It's a Colin. There's lots of Mans and Whites and Palmers in here. And Clements. Who? Yeah, there's another one, a Misson. Bertie Misson. Yeah, I think it was a bit different to Nathan. Somehow it just um, feels that it wouldn't be. It's sometimes Mission. There's a plum there, look. Misson is spelt with a M I S E N. You know, they. Oh, there's a Bridgman. Grace Mary Bridgman died 4th of April 1907, age 13. There's lots of our family, if they are ours. Married it in Bridgman's. There's another James Bridgman and Charlotte, his wife, died 1899, she did, age 82. Lots and lots of graves, yeah. It would take us a day to do this graveyard. It's that big. It's a massive graveyard, this one. There's a slack there. there I do actually go back on my own at another point, and I, I spent a long time in this graveyard scanning and taking photos, and I even make contact with the, the, the church warden, no, the cemetery warden and grave digger, who helps me out quite a lot and lets me have access to the burial records, gives me information about the burials there. Um, so I've got a lot of information about Soham, but I do need to go back to St Andrews at some point to investigate the size of graves there in more detail in the future. Right, back to the cassette tape. In the inside the church, William Slack, eh? They're important. They've got a great big upright um, tomb the the, the um, slacks have. There's lots and lots of graves here. This is a massive job. Um, where they might be, I've got no idea. Could be here. Lister, Isaac Lister, yeah. Died 1867 age 75. I wonder why they don't let dogs in here then. Most people do, as long as you keep them on the lead. We always take Brandy with us. The only reason we wouldn't take her now is um, it's too big for us to have her for such a long time. We've, we've had her before when we've done other. She loves it. Oh, here's a Jonas Mason. We found a Naomi, the wife of Jonas Mason, died March 11th, 1899, in her 68th year. Also, Jonas Mason died May the 1st, 1917, in his 85th year. I've got a feeling the name Jonas rings a bell. Yeah, so I, so, so I said we've got um, Alice Margaret Brown, who died September the 12th, 1938, this is later, yeah. and Elizabeth, 
mother of the above, who died July the 24th, 1932, aged 84. You've got Isaac Peachy, who died February the 15th, 1910, in his 72nd year. Also Maria's wife, who died October the 23rd, 1915, aged 76. Some of these people could have moved from places like Dullingham. There's Mary Ann Brown, who died November the 22nd, 1909, aged 89. Miles and Mary N. Root, Ida C. Elsdon, 1888 to 1964, and Obian Root, Elsdon, 1890 to 1975. Nabel. Lots of Smiths around here. William Smith. There's a great big monument which is tilted on its side of another William Smith of Milton Hall. So they get, probably get buried here from other areas, don't yeah. forget. Yeah. This would be somewhere they were brought. So I don't think they're all from... Something just tells me they wouldn't all be from... Let's have to get the ones that are buried in the... There's a Fletcher here. Yeah, huh? huh? we've got Fletchers in the family. Yeah, Fletcher. Well, there was somebody yeah. coming. Oh, Leonard's and Savages. There's an old book, Leonard, here. Oh, and a Thomas Leonard. There's an Ebenezer Leonard up there. So I said that these were mentioned on wills as well. Um, oh, there's a Starling there. Robert something Starling. Robert Phoebe. Is that Phoebe Starling? George Starling of Brandon Creek. See, they're not all from around here, these people. Cause this just seems to be the place to come. At the end of time. There's a bull family. They, I found bulls at um, the load. Eh? Yeah, like bull. Another Ebenezer Leonard. Seems to be a common name, Ebenezer. Another Fletcher over there. Browns and Warrens. Right, well we've got back in the van, it's a massive um, graveyard. So we've decided to come back another time with Zara's moving camera. Um, and we're going brandy so that we can actually, you know, scan the graveyard in a different way really, which we haven't done before. Because um, be it's going to be a massive task to log everyone in that graveyard, which we, we're really just looking for family names at the moment. But with the camera, we'll be able to scan lots of names, which we could refer back to. It'll be like a reference. Anyway, we're off to Ruffham Church now, which is supposed to be a small village, not far from where we live. After a drive back via Milden Hall, we stopped off, stopped off at our little junction. We were the little chef is, and we had our... A big um, Burger King meal, and Brandy had some chicken nuggets, and now we've, after a little bit of driving around, we've come to Ruffham. For some reason, we wanted to come here, and <coughs> the gate entrance is wooden with a Jesus over it, um, I am the resurrection, <laughs> and the life, it says, and we're going into Ruffham Church now. We're walking along the path now, around Ruffham Church. This isn't. This is only three miles from where we're living at Little Well Neatham. We're just having a little wander round. There's actually somebody's garden in the grounds as well. It's a big memorial upright thing made of stone to the loving memory of Willoughby, youngest son of John Jocelyn, 1854 to 1938, and Francis, his wife, and John Jocelyn, Esquire, born August the 9th, 1816, died February the 19th, 1884. 
John Willoughby Jocelyn, Le Lieutenant Colonel of the late Suffolk Regiment, only son of Willoughby Jocelyn, born the 7th of September 1901, died the 24th of January 1965. That's a big monument to somebody. This is another, right, under some great big fern trees, huge fern trees, there's a huge big slab in memory of Robert Roper of Ruffham Place, who died January the 17th, 1862, age 66, and Anna Maria Roper wife of Robert, who died January the 2nd, 1877, age 78, and also Louisa Jane, daughter of Robert and Anna Maria Roper, who died May, May the 12th, 1837, age 9. Also their daughter, Catherine Anne, born March 1833, died 1895. That's a big slab to somebody. There's some older graves as well. It's a very pretty church. It's made of pebble dash. It's got a lot of um, decorative bits up around the tower as well, made out of pebbles with like badges as well on them. Yeah, it's quite big for a little tiny village. Huge big church. There's a John Barrell, born May the 4th, 1790, died April the 27th, 1884. And his wife Elizabeth, born December the 5th, and 1797, died July the 6th, 1889. And that's at the back, or the front of the church, I'm not sure what's the front or the back. They both look quite um, amazing. Yeah, this lovely church in the, in the little village. Amazing. A yeah, little barrel family, there's several of them. Thomas, Isra, William, Henry, there's a few of them here. I'm just given some of the names. There's a Frederick Richard Edgar, September the 3rd, 1906, age 63 he died, and his wife Elizabeth Sarah, who died age 90 in 1933. So they could be um, identified if one took time to clean them up, of course. <coughs> There's some Cornish family here. A little troop of Cornish people. John May Ward. He died 1818, age, I think it's 69, and Elizabeth, his widow, who died in 1817. How could she be a widow if she died in 1817? Oh, 1847, age 89, and Lucy, their daughter, who died in 1848, age 61. John Goldsmith, who died October the 3rd, 1840, age 45. John and Elizabeth Hayward, his daughter Sophie, who died 31st of March, 1866, age 65. And their son Charles, who died 10th of May, 1868, age 76. There's another one, Howard Proctor. Big one, I can't quite see the dates on that one. Um, Francis 
somebody. This is Rotham Church. I'm just starting on the other side of the tape. There's some lots of names here. There's Agnew, George William Agnew, a great big um, monument to him and his family. Uh, John Stuart Agnew, Baronet, born 16th of December 1879, died 1953. George Keith Agnew, Baronet, 1918 to 1995, four, and his wife Anne Merritt Louise, 1924 to 2005. These were baronets. I wonder where they were baronets of what? This, this, this um, village? Hinton Arthur Stewart died 18th of November 1956, age 82. Anthony Stewart Agnew, Baronet, 25th of July 1914 to the 6th of February 1993. There's um, another, the wife of uh, Hinton Arthur is Dorothy. She died 1940. John D. Clan Sheeran, 1932 to 1999, a circuit judge, beloved husband of Helen Susan, Suzanne. And then we've got Patrick Henry Lyon, Playfair, Air Marshal, born in 1889, died 1974, also Kate, his wife, who died the 22nd of June, 1989. There's a Cooper, Anna. Cooper, a Wheeler, a Sutton. And this is quite an amazing church. Huge. A huge church. I wonder if there's a grave inside this tree. There's a tree here entwined and tangled. And usually you find that but there's a grave in there somewhere. You can see where the rabbits have been burrowing. This is only up the road from where we live. Cobbled. One lying flat. I don't know, something cold there. Died November 1942. I think it's 81 years. Culver. Looks a bit forgotten, that one. There's a few, quite a few without stones now as well. Sarah Bridges, who died February the 26th, 1919, age 79. There's an oak married at Bridges, somewhere along the line. Little Baker family. <coughs> somewhere Brandy's following me. He's looking for rabbits. And Zara's behind her, coming from behind a bush. Yeah. Little baby age one month, one year. Caroline Livett. Yes, what I mean. In the memory of Robert Livett, born January the 12th, 1820, died May the 24th, 1905. Rest in peace, also Caroline, who died the 3rd of June, 1914, aged 98. Oh, she lived all a good old age. They seem to live well around here. It's the air. Robert Bullitt died 1901, age 63. See, I'm recording these people. I don't know if anyone else has. Harriet Co 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 Cobbled, again, that is, I think. There's another one back there earlier. Frederick Charles Sparrow. Younger son of James and Emma Sparrow, died in 1908. So, oh, he was only 23 when he died. 
We've got some more cobbled. It's quite an old one. 18th century. Yeah, it really is a splendid church. More modern ones. Zara's going off as usual because she's got Brandy who's dragging her around the graves looking for rabbits. Zara's run out of film as well. She has got a new camera now. A movie one. And I've got John Theobald who died 1904, age 70. And somebody, a wife, Matt. Matissa, she died in 1907, age 70. That's a splendid looking church. I think this is the back of the church. Actually. It's a smaller door with no porch entrance as such. you got Beatrice Lee Clark, who died in 1971, age 72. And Ida Cicely Clark, who died in 1982, age 87. A little Clark. Um, thing here. Hunt grave. We're having a bit of a scan around here. Oh, we got a chaplain. Victor Willie Chaplin. The Potter. Got a Violet Potter at all. Macaulay. Oh, a sail. My granddaughter's grandfather, he's got sails in his family. Collins. Nice. So, niece. Crack. Daisy Drusilla Crack. Wife of Sydney Albert Crack. She died in 1987. Norris's. These are more modern ones. Um, along here but they are just as important for the future as the ones that are crumbling away. Joan Elizabeth Cox Hedge died at age 57 in 1976 and her husband Henry Charles Cox Hedge. Sutton's and Parnells and Drury's and Young's. Pardon? Oh yes, Sir George Rezin, R-E-Z-I-N, Simmons. He died 30th of January 1969, age 54. And Jolly, no, Joyce Dolly Winifred Simmons, who died 1981, age 64. I think that's a Christian name, or it could be a, another name. You know, for another surname. We've got a Neeson, Dibbins, another Neeson, another Neeson, little Neeson family. There's a huge monument to the war probably. 1939 to 1945 there were five blokes mentioned on there. And then you've got the big war. Just see if there's any vine. There's a Frost, a Howlett on here, a Miller, a Neese, a Palfrey, a Rose, a Sparrow, a Sturgeon, a Woolaker, a Coulton, a Cornish, a Buckle, a Barker, a green, a hunt, a cobbled, men from the Great War, and the, many in the Second War. Oh, they've got a Michael Klimowskis. Yeah, he died in um, 1983, born in 1923. We've got a few put on the thing, another Cornish and a Marsh, and a Baxter and a Gooderham. Known as Twink, Leon Gooderham. Twink, died 26 July 1972, aged 55. That's um, a wife saying that. And a John Henry Ficken, died in 1963, aged 62. Yeah, Martin Sages and Cornishes. And another Gooderham. And a rose, a few roses around here, and a Stevens, and a bird, and a green. I don't know if you've got any greens. Leslie and Violet, niece, reunited, look, those two. And Huffy, 
Ellen Huffy, who fell asleep 9th of March 1963, aged 98, and Corsten Huffy, who died 28th of July 1987, aged 82, and his wife Mabel Anne, who died 1988, aged 81. This is just doing a scan of the graves before I'm going to go and try and go inside in a minute. So I like looking at all Cornishes. An example of Cornish is Pansy Edith Cornish, who died the 17th of January 1966, aged 75. And, um... There's an Arthur Edwin Cornish who died 14th of January 1937, aged 47. And a Walter D. Cornish who died the 8th of January 1972, aged 53. And George Albert Cornish who died ni who was born 1915 and died 1985. I think these are moles. Yeah, they're mole things, sorry. Yeah, I know. Then there's a palfrey. There's a Lily Lucy May Smith. A Woodhouse. A Peter Edward Woodhouse. A few Woodhouses. A Twait. Or a Twat. A Twait. Victor James Twait. 1989. 39. Oh, Walter Bruce Honeybell. Spelt H-U-N-N-E-Y. 1907 to 1983. Imagine a doctor being called. I can't even. My, my friendly doctor. Oh, Honey Bell. Honey Bell. James Mee. He had a Mee somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, all that stuff's stipes. 1859 to 1907. James Mee. Well, yeah, the stipes married him into a Mee family, didn't they? Yeah. And there's Sparks and Toscas, Turners, Clarks and Greenwoods. There's one right up in the corner. I'm going to go around, coming around the front in a minute, will I? There's a Codlin and another Sage. I'm going round this way. There's one there. We've probably got more information on the footstone. And there's one with railings around in the little corner here of a uh, Robert Carrington who died 1703 whoever he was age looks like six John Minette something Squire daughter of De May Here, like wife, lies Judith Crop. It could be Cropley, daughter of John Kendall of Thetford Squire. She married Roger Carrington first, and. Here are also interred the bodies of Elizabeth, Judith, and Anne, daughters of the said Roger and Judith Carrington. Oh, I must read that because I ain't going to last much longer. That's, that's a little, um, little slab thing, upright table looking one with the metal rails around it tucked in. Um, nestled into the corner of the church. Yeah, what was the date on that again? Yes, yeah, 1703. That is old. That was 1703. Yeah, well, if you, but if you think, of, if you look at the, the date of this now, Zara, and we're looking at the hassles, this was the turn of the 16th century. This is 1703. So, well, they go back another 100 years before, but that's the sort of type of tomb you're getting um, 300 years ago. So that, that is, um, that's like um, 300 years old. That's pretty good. 
that's the sort of thing we should, when we see one like that, there's a Mary Charwell, and a George Ling as well. And like Sarah pointed out, there's a little chimney pot on top of the church. I don't know what that signifies. Probably they have to keep the place warm somehow. Somebody's been signing their name. Looks like ZL there. Just going to go around the front because they might have an evening service in a minute. I think it is Sunday. You what? Oh yeah, they've got some sort of writing on them, the buttresses. Yeah, they have been cleaned up some of these though. You can see where the scrapings have been to get the lichens off. So that's in um, Latin probably. So I don't know what it says, but it'd be worth taking a picture of it, wouldn't it? On the 6th of June, 2006, a Tuesday, I ventured to the record office in Bury St Edmunds to do some more work on the Isaacsons and Masons, just to confirm a few details. Um, probably have to look in some other village records for James Mason. There's a few Anne Isaacsons I've got to pin down yet, but no marriage for Exon between James Mason and, and Isaacson have appeared so far, but... I'll probably have to start looking somewhere else for a marriage, but it's a shame really, so that's two family names that are still proving hard to carry on with until we've made that establishment. Um, I also went in the um, Bury St Edmunds Abbey and had a look round there, but I was more impressed with St Mary's Church where my great-grandmother Mary Ann Oaks Brooks and Louis Joseph Edward Stipe got married. I was very impressed with that church. It was, um, it's got, I think, the sec second longest nave in the country. And also these very beautiful carved wooden angels lining the ceiling going up the aisle. Um, they did even look a bit evil as well, actually. But anyway, um, up near the altar... Queen Mary of France, the sister of Henry VIII, is now buried. She was originally in the Abbey, but following the, I think it was the dissolution of the monasteries or something, they moved her. She married Louis VII of France in 15-something or other. He was 52, she was only 18, and then um, he died, and she married the Duke of Suffolk. Um... Brandon, something Brandon, I think his name was, Earl of Brandon or something like that, and um, so anyway, she's buried, there's quite a few famous people buried in there, there's also the Oak family, who were bankers and merchants and everything from Bury St Edmunds, there's a big plaque on the floor for them, I've still yet to establish if there's a link with them, but they go back to Lancashire, so I'm not sure about them yet. Um, so that was, you know, quite a grand church, really. Very ornate in parts, especially with the Suffolk Regiment area. That's been designated for them. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of history about it, so that was quite useful to go in there. Get some postcards and some little booklets about the history of the place. Right, that's it for now.